Abigail and Sir Stuart have elite palates and perfect taste, much better than yours. Learn about the fine nuances of finer wine on Invigorating. <laughs> This wine is fabulous. It takes me right back to those days on grandfather's pheasant farm. The scent after a fresh massacre. Yes, it reminds me a lot of the summer spent in the Congo studying the silverbacks during mating season. <laughs> oh, hell no. We're Stevie and Josiah. A girl and a guy who happen to know a lot about drinking. That's because we drink a lot. But we also study a lot and work a lot. We've worked at some of the best restaurants and wine shops from coast to coast. But at the end of the day, we're still just two everyday people who are thirsty. Really thirsty. We hope you are too. So this is like a big ass book of numbers. What, like what exactly do you do, Chris? Um, yes, it is a big ass book of numbers. And what, actually, I'm, I am a financial plan planner. So I help people plan for the future, plan for retirements, and really make sure that they have that money available to them uh -huh. when they are ready to purchase something. That's cool. All right, so if I want to invest in the long term, are there any like key things that like I should be looking for? Or? Yeah, well, I think if you have a long enough time frame and a horizon, and you are thinking of retirement, I think, no doubt about it, I think you should put your money in stocks, or you should be more heavily weighted in stocks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's key components that you're going to want to look for when you're investing in stocks. You're going to want to look for obviously solid companies. I would recommend what's considered blue chip companies, which are considered very strong companies financially. Um, they pay dividends. They have a history of paying strong dividends. Is that like Walmart and like Apple? Yeah, those are like... those are two examples. Okay. Walmart recently, um, you know, would be a good pick. I think Apple recently has gone down and pays a, a dividend as well. But yeah, you're going to look for companies that have a, a history of returning equity to their shareholders. And I think you want good companies like that, quality companies. So those are the things you're really going to look for in a, in a good company. All right, so let's talk about like bad investments. And you tell me if it's like good or bad. So there's this guy at the swap meet and he sells mixed CDs. He told me if I gave him like a hundred bucks, he would give me like a free CD every week. Is that, did you do it? Bad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what about like uh, my aunt who basically uh, breeds teddy bear hamsters uh, and she wants me to like buy her more like aquariums or like little hamster cages. I, I, I can't say that would be a good investment. Yeah. Um, hogs. No. Slammers though, not the paper one. N not quite. Okay. Uh, Beanie Babies? Almost. I, Special I, Edition? No. Okay. Can't say I'd invest in that. Okay. My Little Ponies? No. The ones though that you like scratch the butt and it smells like strawberry shortcake. Those do smell good, but I can't say I recommend that. No. Cabbage Patch Kids with the cute little faces. No. No. Precious Moments. My grandma had a lot of those little statues, you know, the little cherubs that are, like are sleeping all the time. They're like drunk. I can't say those would retain their value, so no. <laughs> So Chris has just told us two key components to investing in the long term, which are? Well, you want to invest in blue chip companies and then companies that pay a dividend. And there's also, I would say, two key components when investing in a red wine, uh, which I would say are tannin and acid. So Stevie, why don't you break this down for us? When it comes to cellaring red wines, there are two main components you want to look for, tannins and acidity. You've probably heard both of these terms mentioned before. Tannins are the tiny molecules in a red wine that make your mouth feel stuck together. Like all the moisture has been sucked out of it. And acidity makes your mouth pucker, like lemon juice would. Both tannins and acidity contribute to the overall structure of a wine, holding it up and giving it a solid core, or a framework if you will. Both components also act as preservatives in a wine. So, if you're looking for a red to lay down for the long term, you want to look for one that has one or both of these components. The deal is that tannins and acidity can be pretty ripping in the young wine. They might taste harsh or austere, as we sometimes say in geek speak. But as the red wine ages, the tannin molecules actually start to join forces. They precipitate and then drop out in the form of sediment. Meanwhile, other aromas and compounds are evolving and blossoming in the wine, taking over the spotlight from the acidity. The overall effect is a smoothing out of the wine. Low risk, big reward. 
so what to buy? There's a lot of options out there for you, including things like Barolo from Piedmont in Italy, or Bordeaux from France, but since we happen to be based in California, and since we happen to love chowing down on an aged ribeye steak with an aged California Cabernet, and since we happen to be straight up in love with a California Cabernet producer whose wines are amazingly age-worthy, rocking awesome acid and tannin, perfect for laying down in the long term, we decided we'd share her wines with you. Enter Chorus and Cabernet. All right, so we have two different uh, vintages here. We have the 2009-2001. Technically speaking, 2009 is just gonna have a little bit more of those tannins showing, a little bit more acid. It's gonna be in your face. Whereas the 2001 has those tannins and acid, but it's gonna be a little bit more mellow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna blind taste you to see if you can pick out the 2009, which is a little bit more kind of forward, tannins and acid are showing a little more, and then we're gonna blind taste you on the 2001, which should be a little bit more kind of mellow, smoother. So let's see how it goes. Cool. All right, so here comes the pressure, Chris. We're gonna see if you can uh, basically blind taste and tell the difference between the 2001 Corson and the 2009. So Stevie, why don't you uh, give Chris the wines? I know, it's funny. <laughs> Thank you, Stevie. <laughs> All right, so what we're looking for again is the 2009 is just gonna be a little bit more tannic, have a little bit more acid, it's gonna be way more in your face. The 2001 is just gonna be a little bit more mellow. So you're still gonna get those tannins and stuff, but one should definitely be a little bit louder than the other. Okay. So I'll go ahead and give you a chance to taste. Taste the tannins. Cool. It's yeah, definitely taste the tannins. Okay. I feel like this is like a little bit. I, I definitely taste the tannins more so in this one. Uh huh. And it feels like they're a lot louder. Okay. And I'm thinking this is the 2009. Stevie, why don't you go ahead and reveal? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good job. These steaks look awesome. I'm Super excited. Awesome. So, okay, the reason that we picked, so the tannins that we talked about in the wine are awesome because they cut through the like fat of the ribeyes, which is why I got ribeyes because they're the fattiest. Puppies like ribeyes too, which is what's screaming in the back. My kung fu master calls me rattlesnake. I battle fake MCs that'll break their knees and make them say nah, please. You know I'm deadly with my rock steady helmet on. When I run my show like an Olympic marathon. Tracky, whack MC, wanted to enter the woo, but couldn't fight my key. Sprechen Sie Deutsch, that's just all symbolic because I'm a